Good morning guys. Um, I did get out last night and take a bit of drone footage of Dad there in the loader at widening that um, waterway there. Uh, that fence, the new fence there should be done today hopefully. Uh, he's just up to the last strain so I don't even think he'll be a full day there. But we're just widening that waterway there and just building up a bit more of a bank because well the rest of the water the way all the way down through our property has already been widened and and that area up the top there that was very very narrow um, in a very narrow v there and quite a shallow waterway now with water running through such a narrow area the problem with that is it moves really really fast and um, you sort of risk you know it doing more damage or cutting out more um, soil or causing more soil erosion when you do get those big rainfall events so we widen it out so we can slow the water down a little bit and um, yeah look uh, well I mean we haven't really had a lot of water down that waterway for a long long time I mean you asked dad he saw that um, waterway flood multiple times when he was younger but that's really just a testament to the difference in farming practices you know um, not um, tilling the soil stubble retention all those sorts of things um, we just don't seem to have the same problems we used to have with water runoff I've got to go do a bit of summer spraying this morning, try and get as close, well, we should be getting very close to finishing today. I don't know, maybe I should elaborate more on what was, what's was what been going on with this thing, because, yeah, it's it's not been fun. But anyway, let's do it. Now, typically, we just run purely rainwater through the sprayer, but because we've had to do so much summer spraying in that this year, we're getting a little bit low on rainwater, and plus, it hasn't really rained here since November last year, and it's now March 10th, or I don't even know what the date is, 7th, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so we're just doing a bit of a mix, a 50-50 mix of boil water and rainwater, just to uh, conserve a little water for the house. Yeah, bore water is not really great because it's a bit salty and it's a bit minerally and all that sort of thing, but oh well, we gotta do what we gotta do. Right, let's go make a brew. Right, we will map another paddock and get her done. So we're chasing a few different weeds in this paddock here, or in the, this block up here that we got to spray. Um, probably the main two is Bathyspur, which is like a massive prickly plant, um, and the seeds stick in the sheep's wool really, really easily, but it's a horrible plant. It's like got thorns all over it. And uh, paddy melons will be the other one, which is just a big viney plant that grows across the ground and then grows these big uh, melons on the end of it. So they, those melons tend to get wrapped up around the tines on the, on the bar at seeding time, so that, and then they end up dragging a whole heap of dirt. And yeah, they, it's not a great weed. So I thought I'd just elaborate on what I said earlier about how things had gone with this sprayer since we got it. And, to be honest, I love the machine, it's awesome. Uh, makes spraying really, really easy and, you know, it's a pleasure to drive it. But the uh, entire buying experience of getting this thing over from a dealer over on the Air Peninsula has been absolutely awful. And I debated talking about this, I probably shouldn't really, it's a little bit negative, but uh, the way this thing came over to us was nothing short of disgusting, really. Um, there's things that I asked to be done through the workshop before it came over, just like simple things. There was a couple of water leaks underneath, I wanted them to be fixed. Comes over, it's got two water leaks, it's got the tank agitation, the tank flush system, completely blocked with yellow gunky trefflin. Um, I thought that was an operator's error, I thought I was doing something wrong, I ended up having to get in the tank and pull the sprinkler and the agitation out and they were completely blocked. Uh, it had gone through their workshop, they sent me the checklist, 
apparently all the hydraulic hoses and everything were okay. Well, it comes over here, we did the first tank for it's got a huge hydraulic leak down the side. And you can't tell me, I'll show you the picture, but that thing's been leaking for a long time. That ain't been leaking for five minutes, so. Oh, anyway, the response from them so far has been we wouldn't send it over there without those things working. So, it's basically crickets and half the time they couldn't even be bothered returning my phone call, so pretty disappointed to be honest overall and I'm not going to name any names. Oh by the way when I say the agitation and the tank rinse nozzles were blocked with yellow gunky treflin. Treflin's a pre-emergent so that's not something that we've sprayed we're just spraying out some glyphosate and a couple of other things. But anyway that is enough of that. Um, onwards and upwards the thing's running really smoothly at the moment and I just hope that we uh, can have a pretty trouble for a year with it. That'd be nice for the first year so yeah. Rightio, that paddock is done. Uh, I've still got a bit of uh, water left, I think. Or a bit of chemical. About 1,800 litres, so it'll get me through quite a few more hectares. We'll get into this next paddock here and get moving, get mapping. We have run out, uh, so we'll head back, it's about 10 past 11 now, so by the time I get back home it's just about going to be time for lunch, that's how you kill half a day isn't it? I'll tell you one thing about these self propelled sprayers is they are remarkably comfortable to ride around in, like these roads, we've got some like truly awful roads up here, these back roads, and uh, yeah this thing just it's a little bit rougher when it's full of fluid, but like the tank's full, but it's pretty damn smooth. I'm pretty impressed. Right, I think an early lunch break is in order. How's someone's happiness levels today? <laughs> a bit happier? Yes, we've been in the garden. She's <laughs> very happy about that. Rightio, lunch is in. Now, I got a little sidetrack there at lunch because I uh, I don't watch much TV at all, like I literally can't stand free to air TV, I think most of the stuff on there is absolutely rubbish. So I watch a lot of YouTube, a lot of YouTube channels and I, I recently started watching this bloke um, called Sean Woods and he does a lot of mouse trapping because we uh, have had a pretty, pretty serious mouse problem around the house over the last sort of three or four weeks. I think I got ten mice yesterday between the house and the car shed. Now I was watching his video and he recommended to go and watch this guy, what was his name? I have to have a look now. Joseph Carter the Mink Man. Now if you want to see some serious rat catching, holy moly, go and check that bloke out. That, that video I just watched, 240 mice in one outing using mink and dogs. Absolutely unreal. Rightio, let's top up and finish off. All the hard work's done, just got to sit back and enjoy the long straight blows. And I'll tell you what, one thing I really love is this Raven Auto Height Controller. Controls the height of the boom automatically. That thing is just, oh, I don't know how you could live without it to be honest in this country. It's amazing. Alright, all done. That was a hell of a lot quicker than I was expecting. <laughs> Uh oh, we've broken down. I was walking down the stairs and I could hear an air leak. Just when I was talking about having a smooth run. <laughs> no, in all honesty, that's a very easy fix. I'll just have to get a joiner for that. Uh, I'm gonna have to go for a drive uh, to deer, I think. There's a part we need um, for this hitch here. Um, there's a, where it connects up at the back, there's a bushing that's thrashed out and uh, it's doing damage to the diff housing. So I need to go do that. The, um, 
6510 with the cylinder head off, I need to, I want to go get all the parts for that. I want everything, I want to have everything that they have here so I know exactly what we've got. Just so I can make sure that when I get, when the cylinder head finally gets here, they must have put that on a bloody slow boat or something to come over because it's been like over a month. Um, just so when that rocks up, I know that we have absolutely everything uh, to put it back together. So I think it's best I just go for a drive and sort out all the parts that I need. What the heck is that thing? That's the wrong time of year. Ah, uh, it looks like they're harvesting some loosen seed which would be about right, it'd be about this time of the year. Something that not too many people do, but you do see the occasional header out at this time of the year harvesting loosen, so I was a bit surprised when I come around the corner and seen him going there. I thought, oh, I've got the camera on me, I have to stop. Holy moly, there was a lot of parts there. Right, back the other way, we go. Oh, I miss harvest. Oh, wowee, the day has really gotten away from me. It is already five o'clock, I can't believe it. Honestly, it's been a lot less productive today than what I was thinking, but my goodness, have a look at those parts. That's a lot of parts. Anyway, I've got one job I want to get done to finish off the day, which will make me really happy if I can get it done. I want to replace this plastic thing here that's broken. And I've got a, another grill there to go on here. Tidy the old girl up a little bit, you know. I'm not sure, though, how I'm going to replace that. I've got a feeling that this bonnet might have to come off. And this has got to be the worst design ever because you've literally got to unbolt everything to get this bonnet off. Anyway, we'll see how we go. I don't know which box it is, to be honest. We'll have a look. That's just a box of seals, so that is not it. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to need to take the bonnet off to replace that stupid bit of plastic. But, in saying that, I haven't taken the bonnet off for probably three or four years, so I, I wouldn't mind taking it off anyway and having a good look around under the top there, the boost hoses, turbo, exhaust manifolds, all that sort of stuff. So no biggie. Uh, I was probably looking to do that anyway when we serviced it, so we'll just do it now. simple as that really now I just need someone to help me lift it off now the worst thing about lift, trying to lift this thing off is like it's pretty much my maximum reach up there to try and get it off and uh, so if someone's not as tall as me they're gonna struggle which dad is not as tall as me so I have a bit of a cheat for that oh, we have we've discovered a bit of a cheat for this <laughs> farmer style Well, she's off. Um, as you can see, one of the worst designs ever. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, get busy just swapping over this uh, bit of plastic here, guys. Um, yeah, thanks very much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, give us a like if you can. Help me get to a thousand subscribers. I've been trying, 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 trying. I'm trying to get to a thousand. So if you could help me out, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, take it easy, guys. Have a good one.